Good Sunday morning. It's a nice sunny day out. It's going to rain tonight. <gasps> rain all tonight. And then, oh, sunny all the way till Wednesday. And then we're supposed to have a mixture of rain and snow, but sunny and cold with 40 on Thanksgiving. So at least it won't rain on Thanksgiving. So anyway, I got to get my day started. I got to get dressed because... I need to make some more Buckeyes. Buckeyes is a favorite um, And we candy. made some last Wednesday. Was it Wednesday? Wednesday when everybody was here. Remember, we did some baking. Um, so, yeah, I got to make more so that we have some <laughs> by the time Thanksgiving gets here. And I did my grocery shopping yesterday, which you guys know that. Um, I have a bunch of stuff I just set aside over here instead of putting it away in the pantry. I figure why should I put it away in the pantry when I'm just going to drag it right back out in a few more days. So I left it there. So, oh, I wanted to um, review some of the stuff that I got in Alexandra's um, box yesterday. I was so, like, beside myself. I guess that's the best way to say it. Um, when I went to edit my video. Because what had happened was, I was filming that first segment, and then all of a sudden, the camera shut off. And when I looked, it said the batteries had exhausted, so the batteries died. And I changed the batteries, and then continued filming. And then when I went to um, upload and to edit the, the footage and everything, that whole section of when I f first opened her box and everything, it was all gone. So, anyway... I'm going to redo that now and just show you guys um, and show you guys what was in the box. First of all, um, everything that was in the box wasn't just from Alexandra. That's her there. It was from her and her sister, Ida. And um, she sent this and, to me um, in her card. Um, that's where, you know, she had told me. It was from her and her so, sister. I'm um, keeping my cards. I've got two cards now. Um, so, yeah, that's Alexandra and Ida. They're the ones that sent this. Um, I didn't have a chance to hang these ornaments yet. I was going to do that today because I think I need to um, get my hooks and um, hang these up with hooks. But these were really pretty. And when Harry saw these, all the other things that we got, he said that um, he thinks... Um, these are the coolest. He likes these more than anything. So, those are really nice. What are we doing to the kitty? He does not like to be bothered. Leave him alone. Um, something else that was in the box that you didn't see was um, a set of these napkins. And these, I guess, are like their little Swedish elves. And I had asked in, in that segment, um, what what do you call your Santa Claus in Sweden? So, Alexander, you can um, comment. What do you call your Santa Claus there? And what are your elves called? So, let me know that because I'm interested in that. Oh, and then in the box, I think one of the first things that I pulled out was, and I found a nice and little I was spot wondering for it. what that represents. I know um, it's a tradition, a Christmas tradition in Germany to have a pickle and they hang a pickle ornament on their tree and I used to know what that meant a long time ago and I forgot I need to look that up but yeah so like I know in like every you know European country there's a certain thing that is symbolic for Christmas and so by you sending that I'm wondering if there's you know like a story line behind that so if there is I need to know about that too obviously I probably just look up myself and I might do that, but if you want to comment, let us know. That would be nice, too. And over here on my living room tree, I put the Good Yule 2014. I put that ornament there. And then on this tree, I already hung up um, this, the horse that you sent. And remember I told you, like, rocking horses and, like, little play horses is also, like, a very German thing. So, anyway, when you sent that, I thought, oh, that's so nice. That will go perfect on my German tree. So, then, also, 
I've had these on, and I got my socks on underneath there too to keep my feet very warm. Um, these are so cool, and I have to show everybody because she sent two of these, um, a smaller pair and a larger pair. I probably, you know, in case one didn't fit, that there would be another one that would fit. But these um, little sock booties or whatever they are, um, her mother made these. I was so amazed. And I want to show you guys this. Because, okay, so you see it here like this. And then when you put your foot into it, obviously like that, even see like the detail it's like you're putting on shoes shoes that have been um, knitted together and I liked how this was because you see how the stripes go this way but then when you get the part that goes around the ankle and the foot it goes in the opposite direction and like you can't even see any seams on there or anything uh, that that is just that is just so cool and amazing and I love these things I love these things. Matter of fact, I was thinking about getting in touch with you and saying, if your mom sells these, let me know how much they are. Because um, I might buy some of these, like for other members of my family. Or even some maybe different colors for myself. Because I like these. I wear socks all during the winter in my house because my feet are always freezing. And sometimes they get cold, even just with socks. And so then, yeah, I put on slippers and I wear slippers. And when this came yesterday afternoon, this box, I put these on my feet. And they've been on my feet all through the night. And my feet have just been nice and toasty. Tell your mother, thank you. And tell your mother, I love these. I mean, I truly, truly love those. And I like the detailing and how she did that with stripes going one way. And then, you know, the stripes going the other way. Just, just cool. And like I said, it's not like we're like, um, I've seen like in America, people like crochet or knit like little, like the ballerina type little slipper things. And they just kind of go over your feet. But these, uh, seriously, these are like knitted shoes. That's what I like about them. They fit your feet like if you had like shoes on your feet. So, okay. Um, we had opened some of the candy and my boys obviously were sampling and wanting to know how everything tasted. We haven't opened this one yet. Um, you said that this is one of your most popular Christmas candies. And so we will try that. This here, you said um, it's iced chocolate. It's popular for Christmas and either you love it or you hate it. Seriously, like who would hate it? It is so good. And it's kind of cold everybody um we ate some of this um it's chocolate but it melts in your mouth very nicely and when you put it in it kind of has like a cold taste to it and i looked this up <laughs> online to see exactly what this was and what it was made of and the reason why it has that cool taste to it because it's made with coconut oil and um i've showed you guys this in a vlog before i have um coconut oil too this and it's raw packed um, when you eat coconut oil just takes like a, a little taste of it with a spoon it's really cold when it hits your mouth I don't know what's in it that makes it cold but it is but anyway that chocolate um, is has coconut oil in it and that's what gives it like that cold cold taste so that's why they're called ice cups isn't that pretty cool of course, I had to look that up to find that out, but um, those are really yummy. And like I said, who would not like those? Okay, so what else was in there was this chocolate bar, and we started eating the milk chocolate one. <gasps> oh, that chocolate is so, so good. And I mentioned in the video, which segment, which was cut off, um, this, I believe I've seen these chocolate bars um, over at Epcot at Disney World when you go like through the countries and you go to Norway I've seen them in there and I've always wanted to buy one but seriously for a chocolate bar like this um, this size chocolate bar you can go to like Germany um, you know Italy other places like that get a chocolate bar and spend maybe five six seven dollars on it but this over um, at, over at Norway it's almost like they want to charge double the cost over there. So I've never bought one because when I look at that, I'm like, for that size chocolate bar, I'm not going to spend $12, $15 for a chocolate bar. 
Um, I understand, like, when it comes to Epcot, those countries, when they're transporting things, you know, there's taxations and all that other kind of thing. And I think it's high with Norway, and that's why um, somebody was telling me um, there are things when you buy things at Norway. Because you go to Norway, and their prices on everything is so much higher than when you go to other countries. And somebody had said it's because of, like, the taxation for shipping in their products and that sort of thing that they have to, you know, get that back and all that. So they have to raise the price, in other words. So I wanted to try those, and I've never tried it, and it's really good. Next time I go to Epcot, I might go ahead and splurge the extra little bit because that was really good chocolate. And then you sent this. It's the same thing, same milk chocolate, but it's got orange. We haven't opened that one yet. Um, these, these are good. They're like caramels but they have like a gingerbread taste to it and it's not like overpowering gingerbread taste it's just like a hint of gingerbread when you first bite into it it's like biting into like uh, chocolate covered caramels but then you get the little hint taste of gingerbread being in there so anyway Adam really likes those because he likes caramels and he likes gingerbread and then we got these and I put them in this um, Ziploc baggie because the bag's still open and I didn't want them, the air to dry them out or anything. But um, they're like little, the way to describe this in America, if anybody has eaten those orange circus peanuts, like those marshmallowy, they call them circus peanuts, but they're like those marshmallowy candies, it kind of tastes like that when you first bite into it and you start chewing it, but then it gets like gummy. And then it kind of resembles like a gummy bear. So when you first bite into it, it's like that marshmallow, uh, circus peanut like flavor, but then it turns into like the consistency of a gummy bear. That's the only way I can describe that, but those were really good too. And then um, she sent this box. She said this is um, Sweden's most popular Christmas candy. And on the back, they look like this. Those kind of resemble um, a little bit to me like the Belgian chocolates that we can get Belgian chocolates here and um, I'm curious when I open this because I know that they're going to taste different because every country has um, their chocolates taste different just like when I send out chocolate to other people um, that are an American and I usually send Hershey's because when they taste Hershey's it's like no other chocolate that they've ever tasted before I send Hershey's sometimes I send Nestle's and that kind of thing and so um, anyway yeah everybody's everybody's chocolates are different um, then I got this these are and I've seen these actually I think we can get these in America but they're um, Swedish gingerbreads cookies and that's what they're called and she said to have these with the mulled wine that she sent which is and this is such a mess I put a stood on Facebook today I got it or yesterday I got to get this all cleared off I have a few more boxes I have to send out and then this is all for like you know Thanksgiving coming up this week but anyway this is um glog and I've heard of glog before and it's um it's a mulled wine. The English wine. have a similar version of that. It's not mulled. It, it's like a mulled wine, but it's a real light color, like a yellow color. I don't know what color that is because I haven't opened the, the bottle. But there's, um, it's called Christmas Mead. And it's got like yeast in it and all of that. That's what makes it ferment and all that kind of thing. Um, and they also drink wassail. Wassail um, is like a hot punch. And you can have the non-alcoholic version of it, or if you um, do spice it up, I think what they put in there, is it brandy, or I don't think it's rum, I think it's brandy that they put in there. So, um, anyway, so yeah, like, that's another thing, European countries have their version of their hot um, drink that they drink at Christmas, and in Sweden, and I think other parts of Scandinavia, too, it's called glog. And I know this because my neighbor in um, in Virginia that I've talked about her before, she was Swedish and Norwegian. She's from Minnesota, but people in Minnesota, the primary nationalities that you know they're descended from are Norwegians and Swedish people. And then she also sent these. They look like Coke, but I looked this up on YouTube yesterday. Somebody, somebody from Sweden. Um, had a big, huge bottle of this, and she said, 
um, that this is uh, kind of like um, uh, your version of a beer or something. I don't know. It looks like Coke. <laughs> and I noticed on here it has your Santa Claus on there too. So anyway, um, you said you guys drink this at Christmas. So we got two bottles of that. And then there was one other thing that she sent that I put it up there with my smokers. Um, it's this little Advent candelabra here. And um, I put them up here with my smokers. And Alexandra said what they do is four Sundays before Christmas, they light a candle. So November 30th, this not today's Sunday, but next Sunday, November 30th, is when they put one candle on the candelabra and they light it. And then the next Sunday after that, they put the next candle and then until it's Christmas. And then the last candle will be lit um, the Sunday before Christmas, which is December the 21st. So I thought that's really cool, and I'll do that. I'll do that. I'm not Swedish, but I'll do it since you gave me that uh, candelabra. And um, I'll probably still do it in the years to come because I'll put that out. So those were the things that she sent me. I'm sorry that that first segment didn't upload. You guys saw the other part of it, but um, that first part... Um, I was really bummed out that, you know, it wasn't there because I was really surprised as I was opening everything. You could have seen my reaction. So we loved everything. I had everything um, in that segment where I showed everything laying out and I had your picture up there and everything. I just left it that way because Harry was out um, running an errand. And then when he came home, he was like, what's all this stuff? And I said, this is uh, from that box um, from my friend Alexandra from Sweden that I was telling you about. And uh, he started looking everything over. And the first thing that we got into was that right there. He, we wanted to try those and see what those were like. So anyway, thank you, Alexandra and Ida. We really loved everything that was in the box. I hope that um, you enjoyed what I had sent. I had mentioned also in that segment that it got cut off. Um, we have things for Christmas too that um, it was like fluids like how you set like your malt cider and stuff like that we have things um, even like Christmas scents where you like you spray them but they're liquid and I've wanted to send those um, to friends like in like my friend Jenny in Ireland my friend Sarah in Japan and I went to do that even a couple years ago and the lady at my post office said um, you really shouldn't send fluids in the mail because they're very particular about fluids and stuff because of I guess fires and things like that and so um, she said there are certain things that you can send but we recommend that you don't send anything and so that's why I've never sent anything that was in like liquid form but now that you did it and it came through you know the postal service just fine I'm gonna start doing that I'm gonna um when I go send Jenny's box out this week, I'm going to get all their regulations on the fluids and everything. And so that way, the next Christmas, I will know better of what I can send. And so anyway, this was really fun. It was very, very enjoyable. I enjoy doing this. And if you want to do it again next Christmas, I'll do it with you again next Christmas too. And again, thank your mom for these. I love these little booties. They are so warm. And after Christmas is over, that's what's nice about that. I can still wear them, and I'll still be thinking of you, and I'll be thinking of your sister Ida, and I'll be thinking of your mom. And tell your mom, I said, please seek you. Ellie was doggy dreaming. Was that you or was that Lacey? It was so funny. It sounded like they were all outside. Funny girls. Daddy's going outside because he's going to put the Christmas lights up. You can go out in a little bit. you got to wait till the neighbors go in. The neighbor dogs are out. Because you'll go out there and be barky, girls, and just bark, bark, bark. Oh, i got to tell you about these um, little slipper things that uh, you sent me, Alexandra. So last night when um, I was wearing them and I was upstairs doing something, I came down the stairs and Lacey, you know, she's the puppy right there, she, <laughs> she started um, chasing me even down the stairs, biting at my feet because I, I had just, you know, put these on, so... Um, I think she was fascinated with the stripes on them, so it was funny because then when I came down the kitchen there, she was still trying to bite my feet and play with my feet. It was very funny. So yeah, 
We're going to get Christmas decorations up today. So I'm going to show you how I make my Buckeyes. I think I've made this before, last year, the year before, something like that. But I'll show you how I do mine. But first I'm going to make um, Chocolate Charlie. I mentioned this many, many, many vlogs back. Um, after I came back from my mom's, actually. So I was there the end of September, beginning of October. And I don't know if I showed you guys how to make this or not. But Chocolate Charlie... Um, it's big in Indiana, so anybody living in Indiana knows what it is. And my dad even remembers it from when he was a kid, and he lived there for a few years, and he's always liked it. And um, they're still in business today, and my aunt um, sends my dad and my mom Chocolate Charlie like every year because she knows that my dad loves it. And really, all it is, it's like a Rocky Road, but usually Rocky Road is marshmallows with pecans. This is with peanuts. And... Um, I'm, I'm going to tell you how you're supposed to make it, how much chocolate you're supposed to use, um, but when I do mine, I kind of wing it a little bit because I use these chocolate discs. I've told you I like this better than chocolate chips. The reason why in any kind of candy making with chocolate, if you can get those discs, it's better than um, buying regular like chocolate chips. The reason is whatever they have in there, it sets the chocolate quickly. If I use the chocolate disc, whether I'm making turtles, Buckeyes, Chocolate Charlie, anything that I have to use chocolate in, see the chocolate disc will set up quickly. Um, if you use chocolate chips or candy bars that you're melting down, it takes a while for it to set. Now, I remember Buckeyes. Um, when I first got that recipe many years ago, and I'm talking decades ago, the f friend that gave me that recipe said that you melt um, the chocolate chips and you put a scant stick of paraffin wax, and a scant stick meaning you just cut like a slither of wax. You put the wax in there, and the wax is what makes the chocolate um, hard. So there's Chloe barking at the neighbor's dog. All the other girlies came in except for Chloe. Because she's defiant. <laughs> Look at the other ones. They all came in. They're good girls. So I was explaining about, you know, putting the wax in the chocolate. But if you want to avoid all of that, if you just get these, um, these chocolate discs. And who knows? I, I don't know what's in it. Maybe they already have that kind of stuff in it from the factory. That's why it sets. I don't know. Um... All I know is it's very chocolatey, it sets up quickly, so it, it's better than just using chocolate chips. That's my own personal opinion, and that's why I use these all the time. And if you go to, like I said, Wilton's carries them. Wilton's is good. If you go to um, a confectionery place, they're called um, Merkin's Chocolates. Merkin's is the company. Okay, so do, to do this um, chocolate Charlie's, you... <clears throat> need like a 9 by 13 dish or something a little bit smaller, but I like the 9 by 13 to make enough. You need some peanuts, and you can get these small 6-ounce um, um, things of peanuts. If you get them bigger, obviously you'll just have some peanuts left over, but you need that. And you use almost all of the can. Traditionally, Chocolate Charlie's uses these the bigger, not those big jumbo marshmallows that they come out now, just with the regular jumbo. That's why I brought them out here so you can see this. Okay, but what I noticed, they also came out with the stacker mellows, which are the large marshmallows, but they've been flattened like that. And those are for s'mores to make it easier to stack your s'mores when you're making them. Now, they carry these through, like, I noticed them at the end of the summer. I didn't even see them beginning of summer because I think they just kind of came out with it. Um, so I bought, like, a couple bags of them so that I can make some for Thanksgiving and then another batch at Christmas time. And I'm glad I bought those two bags because when I was at the store yesterday, I was looking for them, and they had just stocked all their marshmallows up. And it was just the regular mini marshmallows. These. Okay. Um, the recipe for um, making Chocolate Charlie, my mom uses one bag of 
chocolate chips if she doesn't have the baking disc. And a bag of chocolate chips, I think, is 12 ounces, which is would be like a cup and a half. But my mom says she always adds more. So that's what I do. I do about two to two and a half cups of chocolate. And so I put it in my bigger um, eight cup dish for the simple fact that if I filled it all the way to the two cups when I go to stir it, you know, it, it doesn't leave that much room at the top. I like to, you know, have lots of room to stir my chocolate. So this is going to go in the microwave. When you microwave your chocolate, you're supposed to microwave every one minute. So you put it in for a minute and then you get a spoon and you stir it. And then if it needs to go back in and you can tell if it is still kind of pretty chunky, you put it back in for another minute. This is if you got like a lot of chocolate. If you're only doing a little bit of chocolate at a time, you could put it in for a minute and go to stir it and it's all completely melted. Okay, this is having it in there one minute. This needs to go a little bit more, obviously. Okay, so that's the whole bag like that. And I think what my mom makes is she puts her marshmallows down first and then she puts her peanuts on top of it. I think that's the traditional way Chocolate Charlie's is, but I found when I did that the first time, um, I found a lot of peanuts, they sunk to the bottom anyway, um, and you'd get a little bit on the sides, and I find that um, when you um, break it up, you usually have bits of peanut in there when you're biting it, so you get the peanuts and the marshmallows, is what I'm saying, so, I mean, you can do whatever you want, but um, anyhow, um, the next thing we're going to do is pour the chocolate on top, and i got to see if my chocolate is ready. And then what we're going to do is take the chocolate, and then you're going to pour it all over. And then what I do after I get all my chocolate poured in, I take my spatula, I move it around, and if, I mean, the, the chocolate measurements that I gave you is going to be enough just to coat your marshmallows and your peanuts. Um, I have a little bit more chocolate here. This is probably about three cups of chocolate. So, um, and the reason why is because, I don't know, I just like myself a bit more chocolatey. Now see, like this doesn't, this one marshmallow didn't get a lot of chocolate on it. But you want to just go through it because you want to make sure that your chocolate, your peanuts, your marshmallow, everything is touching. Okay? So that's why I get down there and just make sure about that. And then you're just going to leave that go like that. And you're going to let it dry. And then when you take this out, um, Chocolate Charlie's, they keep their solid in a box. And then you're supposed to, every person, get in there and just break off a hunk. And that, that way, um, when you're breaking it off, even with your big marshmallows, you know, you get the big marshmallow with the peanuts and all that. And so, yeah, after this dries, I'll pull this out. And then I'll just break it on my counter. <clears throat> I just break it into pieces. And then I just put it in a container and I, I layer it with you know wax paper so it, it doesn't okay end up this recipe sweet. for buckeyes why is it called buckeyes because it's supposed to look and resemble a buckeye now I'm not positively sure on this but I think that the person who came up and became creative with this recipe um, of peanut butter balls is what it goes by to other people um, I think I think I'm not sure but it, you know, was made up by somebody that lived in Ohio. And they made them, um, so when you dip the peanut butter balls, you don't dip it all the way down in the chocolate. Where other people will dip them all the way into the chocolate, and therefore they call them peanut butter balls. What they did in Ohio was instead of dipping them all the way, they dipped them about three quarters of the way. I'll show to you. Well, actually a little bit more than three quarters, just up to At the Christmas very top. time, the reason why this is kind of a nice candy to make because chestnuts, especially roasted chestnuts, you know, that's like a big thing. You know, people start doing that Thanksgiving and all the way through Christmas. And 
the chestnut looks a little bit kind of like a buckeye too. And so if you wanted to not call them buckeyes, you can call and them candy you chestnuts. You need one and a half cups of peanut butter and you need two and three fourths cup of confectioner's okay, sugar. Okay, so you want to um, cream this up till you get just about all the lumps out of your um, your butter there. Mine's almost completely out. Um, the more that you beat it, the lighter the color of your peanut butter and butter will become. And that's okay. But when you start adding the confectioner's sugar in here anyway, um, it's all going to get incorporated. Those lumps will go away. But you see how creamy that is? Okay, another thing is when you're putting your powdered sugar in, do it like, you know, the three quarters cup. Maybe do like another um, three quarters cup. And a little bit slowly because otherwise you'll have powdered sugar go everywhere. You know how that goes when you put powdered sugar or flour in. Um, and if you dump it too fast, it just, you know, goes everywhere. So you see how crumbly this is? And I'm probably going to go ahead and whoops, take my spatula here and go around the sides and just kind of mix it all together but um, say when you pinch it together you see it becomes like um, play-doh okay so if you roll your balls into um, one inch balls and you don't eat any dough like I did that's why we're missing a spot right there but um, you should get about 35 um, I have 34 here so um, these need to go into the freezer if you're sticking it in your freezer of your refrigerator, you're going to need to leave it in there for a good couple hours. If you have a deep freezer like I do and you put it out there a good hour to hour and a half, they're nice and hard. You want to make sure that they're hard. Like when you stick a toothpick in the center, you want the toothpick to go in but you don't want it to like slide in very easily. You want it to like you have to push pretty hard to get okay, it through so there. I put my Buckeye balls in the freezer came in, cleaned up the little mess that I have, came back over here to check this, and I can see this is really, really hard. So I'm going to pull this out. It's still a little bit warm on the bottom. Um, see, you can pull it back. See that? And then I'm going to let this set just a little while longer, but I just want to show you what it's like. Then you break it in pieces like that and then you'll get your peanuts in there and your marshmallows in there and it's just like I said it's like Rocky Road okay and so this is what chocolate Charlie looks like when it's all just broken up in little little hunks like that and I've got two layers there okay what I do I go ahead and melt my chocolate before I run and go get these um, because the longer you leave them in the freezer, obviously it's not going to get room temperature as quick. Um, when I do any kind of candy dipping in chocolate, I make sure I either have a deep bowl um, or I use a measuring cup so that you can dip right down in there. And these should be really hard like that. See that? That's what you want. And when you go to stick your toothpick in, you should have to push down in there to get that. And then we dip to about right there, just like that. And then you need to have two hands to kind of get that off of there. And then after all of these have been dipped in chocolate, these will be room temperature. Then I take and I pinch this or use my finger and just kind of push it and it will close the hole up. And so I'll show you that when I'm finished. Okay, so there we have it. And so the last two, you can see the little toothpick holes there. And so you just go like that. Just move your finger over it a little bit, smooth it out. These are still, um, they're not completely room temperature yet, but close to it. And then when you do that, then you cover up all of the holes. And so, again, they're called Buckeyes. Um, this recipe has been around, I don't know, I think since like the 70s or the 60s in Ohio. Um, I remember making these when I was um, a teenager is when I first started making them. And um, for Christmas, if you want to call these chestnuts, like, you know, candy chestnuts or Christmas chestnuts or something like that, instead of Buckeyes, it just gives it a little bit more of a, 
a Christmassy sort of theme <clears throat> to this candy. We just call them Buckeyes because to us they're just Buckeyes and they'll always be Buckeyes. So let me take a bite. Um, very creamy, creamy center. It's like eating a Reese's cup. So Reese's cups have more chocolate and less peanut butter filling. Here you're getting more peanut butter filling with the chocolate. So anyway, you guys, this is my vlog for today. Harry's almost done decorating out back. And then he's got to go out front. And I put my nutcrackers so, there that I bought. It's been a busy day. It's 224. But it'll be getting dark here in a couple hours because it's getting dark early. So I will say goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow.